What's up? Welcome back to the Really Real Show with John and Wes. I'm your host, John. Y'all know me. Uh, we're back with our lovely co-host, Miss Tamara Green, and our very special guest, Miss Melissa Young, here for this forum. Uh, and it's, it's on discrimination. We're going to try to hit as many as we can. The first thing I want to hit is the Trayvon Martin case, which is still very much on the minds of people in this country. The question I want to ask is, is the Trayvon Martin case really a case of racism in you guys' eyes? Tamara, how do you feel about that? Um, I think it began as a racial issue because, you know, the information that was put out there was kind of iffy at first. But now, I'm not really sure. I think he's just a butthole that really has no respect for anyone but himself. I think that it, it's, it, I would say yes, it's a racism case. Because I think, based on the evidence, it started because of a stereotype of a racial group. Yeah. So I personally think it, it is a racial issue. All right, I'm going to break the tie. I think people made it a case about racism. Zimmerman himself, I don't think he's a racist. I just think he's an idiot who who went out of control with a situation, and and now he's got to pay for it, regardless of if it was racist. Not he needs to. That's murder. So you should be in for twenty plus. I think that's how that's what you get for murder. Can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. If the kid had been white with a black hoodie on, walking through the predominantly white neighborhood, would the same reaction have taken place? Would he have even followed the kid? I don't know. Wow. I, that's a tough question because yeah. I, I don't know what he would have done. He probably wouldn't have. <laughs> and when you put it like that, it is a racial issue. But I think his true colors are starting to come out now. And so regardless if you're white, black, Asian, whatever. He just you, has issues. Yes, you, he has issues. So yeah. now it's everybody's issue. It's just not a black community issue. It's everybody's issue. All right, um, this is going to lead me to my next question. Is black on black crime a national, is it is it in the national spotlight as much as it should be? I'll put it that way because when the Trayvon Martin thing happened, of course, Al Sharpton and company were down right on the scene the next couple of days after they heard about it. If that would have been a black man killing a black kid, would that have been national news? And if it would have been, why not? Why is that not national news? If I'm murdered or mobbed in my neighborhood by someone black, it's not going to make the national news because less value is put on the life of a black person in this country based on our history of how we've been treated in this country. If a white guy is robbed on the street, a lot of black people aren't going to rob the white guy nowadays because they know the cops are going to hunt them down to find them because they robbed a, black, a white person because there's more value on a white life in this country. That's my opinion. <laughs> well, can that can that problem be solved? How do, is, I mean, is it wow. just a is it just an enlightening type thing the black community has to go through? Or, I mean, I, I know you can't get rid of crime necessarily, but knowledge is the only way to solve it. Mm -hmm. Knowledge, I won't even say education because a lot of people are, are in our community aren't picking up books nowadays. No, it's a knowledge thing. No. Knowledge has to be passed down from parent to child, from grandparent to grandchild. It's a knowledge thing on the Atlanta scene or just the just the our community type scene, the love and hip hop and the uh what, what are you know this better than me Tamara. What do you call these shows? Love and hip hop, basketball wives, uh baseball wives, football wives or whatever. Foolish reality. Because I think it's a lot of good reality out here. It's a lot of reality that help upcoming artists, that help whatever type of career you want to go in, it's a reality show for it. But okay, let me ask you, let me ask you real quick. Foolish. How does that look on the black community to the outside world? How does that make the black community look? It depends on what you watch. It, de it just depends. If you just sit in the front of the camera and watch a VH1, I'm talking about VH1. One, talking about VH1. You're, you're really not those getting are the any hottest type of shows substance. Now. Those are the hottest shows. It's really not. Nah, but okay, I guess I in about. the black community, then yes, love and hip hop and basketball wives is the. It's foolish. I don't know if it. It's just so hard. I don't want to say it. I say it, girl. Say it. It is a representation of black women. It is because it's on a national platform. But does it define me? No. Does it define Miss Young? No. But I don't want to say it. Say it. Yes, it makes us look bad. Absolutely. It really does. I, I agree. 
I was, I was waiting. I knew he was going to get it out. I was waiting <laughs> on it. Sad. I tried my best to stay as far away from those shows as possible. <laughs> um, how about let's move on to Tyler Perry. He's the most popular black filmmaker out right now. Hands down. But what about his productions and his movies? How, how does that look on the black community? Just say I'm a white man in Ohio or I'm a white man in Pennsylvania and I don't get in contact with a lot of I don't come in contact on a day-to-day -day basis with a lot of black people. But I turn on TBS and I see Mr. Brown and Mr. Payne and they acting a fool, just ignorant as they can be. How does that make the black community look to you, Ms. Young? To me personally, I think um, it definitely has a negative um, connotation. Yes. It definitely <laughs> has no, a I negative just... connotation. I don't want to say it because I'm also very proud of what Mr. Perry has accomplished. Um, I would just like to see him take the time, as other black filmmakers in America, take the time, or even I, I challenge other production companies that are not all African American, take the time to hire people that have been trained mm -hmm. to do this. People that understand <laughs> how to write a character that has depth and that is not stereotypical. You eliminate those problems once you do them. But the way to balance it, the way to balance anything in, in art, is you show a variety. Yes. So give yeah. me, for every negative stereotype that's out there, give me an opportunity to have a show that, that shows yeah. something that's not negative. Give me the whole story. Exactly. Don't, give me, don't give me the bad part exactly. of the story, basically. Exactly. And I won't, I won't have any problems. I would have no problems with the Mr. Browns if I also have Mr. Cosby. Yes, mm -hmm. I was just yeah. going to say Dr. Yeah. Huxtable. And I think the foundation is there because they have good characters where family is most important and morals. But it's just the the comedy is just outweighing the good that they have. Personally, I just think I ain't taking trying to take nothing away from Tyler Perry, but it's just not good. Like it's no, just I, don't I agree. Whether, I don't think whether, so. whether it's stereo it's, 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 it's not good. It's not good. And then that, that's the definition of, of of it's not going to be good because it has all of the elements to make right. a bad story. My yeah. liquor. Systematic about liquor. <laughs> is discrimination playing the is discrimination playing a big role in female the lack of female directors in major filmmaking? I mean, of course. Yeah, not, I, not not I not not agree. Not blatantly, as in oh, you know, this group we're not gonna you know give them jobs. Mm -hmm. But there there is a, a hurdle that black female film directors have to overcome, which is. Um, the powers that be, which would be the studio heads, the people that yeah. green light pictures. Hollywood. They, they don't see, they see black women one way. Yeah. And so therefore, those are the only roles that they will write for us. Those are the only roles that they want to see us in on film. And those are the only roles that they want to have us directing. Yeah. I, I, think it's, I think it's all women. Um, and just mm. from, from movies. No, no I'm, not, I'm not talking about as far as acting. I'm talking about, I'm as far talking as about directing. Directing as no, well. It's not. I, I'm sorry, as a black female director that has set across from studio heads in Hollywood with story ideas, I can tell you it is not. Nancy Myers is a female director. Like, we now have a white female director that has won an Oscar. She broke history. I don't, I, the, the levels are not the same. Like, right. you, have, you have, like, Cassie Lemons was an amazing, she directed Eve's Bayou. She has not done a, another picture that, had a budget over a hundred million dollars yet. Eve's Bayou was number one at the box office for five weeks running. She should have had another big picture. Love and Basketball, a female black director, blew the box office, off the lid off of it. She should have had another big film. Hasn't happened. So I disagree that it's equal for white female directors and black, but it's not an all No, I, no I don't mean equal. I, I don't necessarily mean equal, but I still believe all of them get discriminated. All right, let's move on to, to animal rights subject, which is always a hot topic because of PETA and others, animal rights group, ASQA. You see the commercials of the sad dogs. Um, do, <laughs> yeah, but you have. You see the commercials of the sad music and the sad dogs. But how far should animal rights go as far as humans doing things to animals and how much protection animals should be up under? How do you feel? But I will say this, that animals 
are they you can't compare them to humans but they have feelings mm -hmm. they have a brain they think they have they they have you know they want to feel compassion and want to feel love so yes they should yes okay yes right. i think there are some instances where PETA is out of control i i love animals i i have an adorable dog um i try to you know, watch what I wear, you know, and make sure it's not in excess. But I think there are instances where PETA gets a little out of control. I think that they are on a, a celebrity binge right now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I don't believe in animal rights, um, not to the least bit. Uh, and I'm not saying I don't. As my dog looks at me, <laughs> okay. like, really? I'm, I'm I'm not, I'm, I'm, I don't understand. I guess I, I guess I can somewhat understand how we pick and choose which animals are you know, which have known now for a hundred years are pets and other animals are racehorses or other animals are just farm cows or whatever, you, mm -hmm. you know, but I mean, I don't, what I don't believe is a human should have to, say Michael Vick for example, and the thing he went through, I, I believe jail time for killing dogs, electrocuting dogs, drowning dogs, I believe jail time is too harsh of a punishment. They're just... I mean, the bigger scheme of things, animals aren't that important. Okay. That last sentence that you just said, I can find in one of my books on the bookshelf where that was said by a white man on a slave plantation about black people and his slaves at one point. They're animals. They can't learn. Yeah, but these are can, animals. Can, no, <laughs> but in their eyes, we were animals. Yeah, they I understand that. They said that we grew from gorillas. We walked on all fours. We didn't have a brain. We couldn't learn. And therefore, we didn't have rights. In, in the Emancipation Proclamation, there is, there is a line that talks about if, if black people are human or subhuman, are they animals? So I think that line, you have to be real careful mm -hmm. because it can flip on us at any time. Yeah. That's my biggest disconnect between how we pick and choose which animals are really more important than other animals. Right. Because okay. dogs can feel or, you know, no, are more of a companion than other animals, so they're more important, basically. What are we saying? Mm -hmm. Dogs are better than fish or, you know, or cows <laughs> that we eat and do everything we want to do to, or pigs, because we made them, they, they, they are better to us than other animals are. Okay. So that's my biggest disconnect. We got more to come <laughs> on the Really Real Show with John and Wes telling me we can keep it going. But we'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Man, welcome back to the season finale of the Really Real Show, man. This has been the season finale. This is still the season finale, man. We're going to close it on out for y'all, man. It's been real. I'm going to start off by saying that, man. I appreciate all the love in season two, man. All of the featured guests we've had on all the shows. Superstar 9K, Rollo Jesus. I mean, it goes on and on. You know what I'm saying? Jay-Z, of course. Uh, I mean... Hey man, we had Miss Melissa Young. I mean, how was that interview, man? We had, we was going so long after the interview, we couldn't fit it all in the show, man. That's just how it goes. We got brand new co-hosts, Miss Tamara here, man. Come on, man. I mean, this is the really real show, man. We gonna finish it up in style for y'all, man. The rap brackets. I know y'all been waiting on them. We gonna close it out for you, man. Eminem versus Andre 3000. And y'all know we in Atlanta, man. It wasn't hard to add them posts up, man. I, Eminem did get a lot of love. Bro. I took M, but yeah. it was Eminem got a lot of love, but Andre 3000, come on, son. True. Come on, son. Me, I can't take Come on, man. Before. Come on, man. Yeah. And, and T.I. versus Lil Wayne, which was a very heated battle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I seen, I seen but, two ninjas get the swing. You know what I'm saying? We, we did interview more guys than girls, so T.I. won. <laughs> um, but, you know, we did. That bring us to the finals, which we had Andre 3000 versus T.I., which really, like, made some people change their lifestyle. Like, they cut their dreads, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it was crazy. It was crazy. That, that battle was crazy. But... You had to look at what the criteria was, man. From 2000 to right now, and T.I. took that 
crown, man. His crown that he already had. He took that. He took that crown, man. I mean, we're talking about six, seven albums, two, three jail spent. You know what I'm saying? It still it, you know, okay. it, it, it all went right in. That's what I'm saying, man. I mean, it all went right in, man. I mean, right in, man. 103,000 as far as being an artist, man. You know what you are, man. We ain't got to sing your praises, man. You're true, man. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we know what's up with that, man. Shout out to you. I mean, the king came through and won that battle. Like my man John said, big shout out to all the guests that we had on the show. Much love to our new co-host, Tara on the House Green. You will be seeing more of her next season when we come back, so make sure you stay tuned. Uh, before we get out of here, man, there is a nine-year-old basketball player, black now, fourth grade. Of course. This guy is on the court, breaking little kids' ankles. He shooting jays. I mean, this guy got like like mad skills, man. His name is Mike Miles, man. Make sure you Google his name, Texas YouTube him. Uh, the Texas Titan, man. The, the whole team is fine. He not even the only one. The whole team is fine, man. Oh yeah, man. and the RZA is making his directorial yeah, I saw that. debut I saw that. I saw that. with yeah. Russell Crowe and Lucy Liu starring Absolutely. in The Man with the Iron Fist presented by Quentin Tarantino. We know, you know, I know. I'm going to be there. Shout out to, I'm going to be there for the Batman. I heard the Spider-Man was good. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Jackie. Much love. Yes. Much love. And shout out to the Mabels, man. Y'all know where we at, man. You don't been good enough, man. The Mabels, man. Hi, Bob AQ. This is the Really Real Show with John and West. Once again, I'm West, third of my name of the house, Jenkins. Yes. This is John, son of, of Marcus. the house, Russian. And this is Tamara of the Tamara, excuse me. Of the, of the house. house. Green. Make sure you stay so yeah. public don't really know about a lot of the female directors out there. And I do agree with you when it's not equal as far as black female directors and white female directors. Because a white female director, like you said again, green man, before a black female director, and probably other than us three can't nobody else name any black female directors um, or writers that that's in the, the main spotlight. They rather see a script like Precious, you know, and they could not resist putting her on screen, stealing a chicken, a fried chicken burger, running down the street with a fried chicken in her hand. You couldn't resist putting that in a movie. That imagery is a stereotype. Yes. So Killer Weather Sea World was planning a protest against management, but it was canceled because of rain. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> Back, you're watching the Really Real Show with Johnny Liz, and I'm your newest co-host, Tamara. I just had a memory blank. Welcome.